and I have explained even what you're talking about. I'm just not giving it to you. Why? Because I don't want to, because I've done it already. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times celebrities almost lost it on live TV. No, I don't know where that comes from, no. For this list, we'll be looking at moments when famous people got a little emotional, but managed to hold it together on television or online streaming. Would you have reacted the same way as these stars? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Dating History Debacle The Ellen DeGeneres Show Ellen's jokes don't always go over so well with her guests. During one visit, DeGeneres continually implied that Taylor Swift had a relationship with Zac Efron. You were here with your boyfriend Zac Efron last time. How's he doing? Um, we actually never dated. Yes, you did. At first, the singer-songwriter held on to her smile and laughed. However, as the host steered the music discussion into an excuse to talk more about Swift's dating life, the jovial attitude started to fade. So let's just talk about the new CD then. There's a lot of songs. <laughs> Which song is about Zach on the new CD? Um, there's nothing really about Zach on the CD because we didn't, we didn't date. Despite Swift's protests, DeGeneres pushed her to play a game that would reveal which male celebrities she'd written songs about. Eventually, the songstress briefly let her emotions show, as she yelled for Ellen to stop. Mom is, mom is, oh, okay, alright, alright. This makes me feel so bad about myself. Every time I come up here, you put like a different dude up there on the screen. <laughs> And it just makes me really question like what I stand for as a human being. Quickly pulling herself together, Swiftly calmly explained how much she felt about the show's obsession with her love life. Number 9. Too Darn Hot Hot Ones Being able to hold it together while eating flaming wings in a Hot Ones interview is often a badge of pride for celebrities. Look at us. Hey. Look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Paul Rudd set the self-control standard during his run at the Scoville scale. He consumed all 10 wings without reaching for milk or water. At the end, Rudd took it a step further and combined all of the sources. Here we are now, 166 episodes later, doing in all 10 sauces, dab on the cauliflower wings. I'd like to point out yours. The actor came close to tearfully giving in to the fire quenching liquid. However, he and Sean Evans decided to distract themselves by acting out an emotional scene. Rudd made it clear that the few tears that escaped his eyes were because of the heartfelt moment, not the hot sauce. It's not the hot sauce, it's you. You are good enough. You should have made that team. Number eight, give him a break. Live from the red carpet. The kids from Stranger Things achieved a remarkable amount of fame at a very young age. Sadly, this didn't mean that fans cut them any slack when it came to in-person interactions. Got it. There we go. Stop spying on me, creeps. Well, shit. During a red carpet interview for the show's season 2 premiere, Finn Wolfhard revealed that earlier that evening, he'd been booed. I got booed. Yeah. There's a giant group of like lined up fans that like booed me. The actor was 14 years old at the time and hadn't felt comfortable stopping for autographs. As he recounted the incident, he continually repeated that it was fine, but he looked visibly upset. Luckily, he didn't let it overwhelm him. With an admirably mature attitude, Wolfhard declared that he wouldn't let the negativity ruin his night. It's fine, but that's not ruining the night, so. Number seven, not the right location. Legend press conference. During a Toronto International Film Festival press conference, Tom Hardy had a moment that required some self-control. He was promoting his crime thriller, Legend. Could you guys handle that? Yeah, we can handle it. Really? Good. In this film, he portrayed two characters, one heterosexual and one bisexual. This may have been the inspiration for the reporter who asked Hardy about his own identity. Do you find it hard for celebrities to talk to their sex to talk to media about their sexuality? What on earth are you on about? After the inquiry, it's clear that the actor was annoyed by the reporter's approach and topic. Despite the smile on his face, there was a definite irritated tone in his voice. Ultimately, Hardy cut the reporter off without answering the question. Um, are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> um, Thank you. you. Okay. 
In a later interview, Hardy explained that he's open to any subject in the right situation. However, discussing his sexuality in a large public forum was something he considered inappropriate. Number 6. A Sloth Fakeout – The Ellen DeGeneres Show it's possible that Kristen Bell was able to hold back a complete meltdown on The Ellen DeGeneres Show because it would be her second sloth situation. While visiting the comedian's talk show, Bell recounted a hilarious story of being surprised with a sloth visit on her birthday. I didn't know how to process that because my entire life had been waiting for this moment where I would get to interact, I'm serious, with the sloth. Uh -huh. While anticipating the chance to see her favourite animal, the actress had a complete emotional breakdown. After the story, trickster Ellen hinted that they had a sloth on the show as well. Belle teetered on the edge, but Ellen quickly revealed that it was all just a joke. Let's bring out it, the cutest sloth. Did it. No, I just wanted oh to see. Belle's barely contained emotions proved that it was lucky there wasn't an actual adorable animal in the studio. <laughs> Who knows what that cuteness overload might have done to the emotional actress. Number 5. Moby Has the Booze – 19th MTV Video Music Awards It all started after the 2001 Grammys, when Moby called Eminem homophobic, racist and misogynist. The rapper retailed with song lyrics in Without Me that declared Moby old and out of touch. So Moby, you can get stomped by Obi. You 36 year old boy that's dead. You don't know me, you're too old, let go, it's over. Nobody listen to techno. A year later, at the MTV Video Music Awards, it almost ended in a fight. First, there was a brief confrontation between Moby, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog, and Marshall Mathers before Eminem won a moon person. Eminem! Eminem, come on! Let's stop to him! Okay. Time, what? Then, during the rapper's acceptance speech, he threw in a quick Moby insult. The audience started to boo the winning artist. For just a moment, there appeared to be a chance that Eminem might give in to his irritation, as he threatened to hit the older singer. We keep booing. Keep booing, little girl. I will hit a man with glasses. Ultimately, he managed to ignore the booze and finish his speech without incident. Number 4. What Happens on Twitter Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen The tension was palpable when Andy Cohen brought Kenya Moore from The Real Housewives of Atlanta and the comedian Michael Rapoport together. You've been trash-talking Kenya for a while yes. on Twitter. <laughs> um, on, just on Twitter, not in real life? These two celebrities had never met in real life, but they'd been feuding on Twitter for quite some time. It was clear that neither one wanted to be in the other's company. You do know that you are on the show, like a villain, right? You know, you have to know this, correct? You've gotten better. Well, but you are a villain. Michael, I don't need you to tell me what I am or am not. On the show. I appreciate you being a fan, though. I Thank am you a fan. for watching. Keep the cable on. It only got worse when Cohen questioned them about the online arguments. Both celebrities maintained a veneer of good humor, but by the end, they couldn't keep from slinging insults at each other. I wish you were me, Kenya. Um. Oh! <laughs> a middle aged fat white guy. Oh! No! <laughs> Despite the smiles, the body language and tension between them spoke volumes. Number 3. Understated fangirling – Associated Press Who knows what the interviewer was really asking Anne Hathaway on the red carpet before the premiere of The Intern. In this clip, Hathaway quickly hijacked the conversation to gush about Mariah Carey. But I saw footage from you on your red carpet for the premiere of The Intern and you were losing your mind a little bit because Mariah Carey was there. Yes. <laughs> when she realized the diva was behind her on the red carpet, she had to exert extreme self-control to avoid complete crazy fangirling. The Academy Award-winning actress adorably channeled her inner teenager as she tried to low-key admire Carey from a distance. I'm just... I am not good at meeting people. So you're worried you'll make a bad first impression? Is that what you're saying? I'm not worried. I know. You know. It is so happening. I am not good at keeping it, like, together and cool. However, the proximity was so distracting that she couldn't focus on the questions about her movie. The idea of meeting her idol seemed too overwhelming, so Hathaway valiantly continued the interview. 
However, she did make sure the camera would catch Kerry in the background at the same time. Number two, it's definitely you. Good day, Sacramento. It's never a good sign when the host introduces the guest with the wrong name. Carla Delevingne is in the movie. She joins us live from New York City to talk about Paper Towns. Carla, good morning. Hey. Hi, how you doing? We're doing all right. Nice to have you here. Then this interview with Cara, not Carla Delevingne, quickly took a turn for the worse. The Good Day hosts visibly confused and annoyed the actress with random questions about her sleep schedule. I saw you in London talking a couple weeks ago on TV and you seemed a lot more excited about it than you do right now. Are you just exhausted? Despite Delevingne's valiant attempt to laugh off the rudeness, she was told point blank that she seemed irritated. Luckily, the host provided the English actress with an out by suggesting it might just be them. Yeah. You, seem, you do seem a bit, <laughs> a bit irritated. Perhaps it's just us. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just you. I think it probably is us. Yeah. Showing extreme self-control, Delavine let her mask slip a little and agreed. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, I'm not doing this. Channel 4 News. From the beginning of his interview with Quentin Tarantino, it was clear that Krishnan Guru Murthy was trying to get a rise from the director. He implied that Django Unchained was badly reviewed, but Tarantino declared that he loved the debater inspired. Oh, I couldn't be happier with uh, the reaction to this movie. It's been fantastic. It's good publicity, I suppose. Well, no, I mean... no, 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 it's, it's creating a nice debate. The Channel 4 News reporter then chose the hot topic issue of whether there's a relationship between on-screen and real-life violence. Tarantino insisted that he'd already made his opinions clear on that controversy. Sure, do not ask me a question like that. I'm not going to, I'm not biting. I refuse your question. Why? Because I refuse your question. I'm not your slave and you're not my master. You I'm can't just... make me dance to your tune. I, I I'm, not, ever... I'm not a monkey. Guru Murthy continued to push the subject despite Tarantino's irritated refusal. Finally, the director got a bit more heated and clearly shut the reporter down. It's mm -hmm. not my job to flesh it out. No, it's my, it's my job to try and ask you to. And I'm all, shutting you know? your butt down. And that's, that's entirely your that's entirely This your, is a your, commercial your right. from my movie. As soon as he switched his line of questioning, Tarantino cheerfully continued the interview. There was a definite irritate. There was a... There was a definite... Inf